So we've went through a bit of a choppy period in charge of Crystal Palace, I think it's fair to say. Hopefully we're at the other end of it now, but uh, let's take a look at the results. So the first result, following the January transfer window, was a 6-1 away defeat against Manchester City. Remember the first game of the season when I beat them? Yeah, uh, now we're getting beat 6-1 by them. We then went away from home against Chelsea and managed to get ourselves a point somehow. Martin Alfonso actually put us in front 66 minutes in, but Craig Blenkinsop equalised in the 76 minute in a game Chelsea were absolutely dominant in. And by the way, this is the defensive midfielder I signed for Leeds, who I said was going to be the best midfielder on the game. This is him now at Chelsea. Aha. Uh -huh. We then had a home tie against Liverpool and once again suffered defeat. Alexander had put us in, in front inside seven minutes through a penalty. But then Liverpool came back into it, particularly in the first half, and uh, went 3-1 winners. And hopefully this was the turning point, a 2-0 FA Cup fifth round win against Coventry City. It's nothing to write home about, but Yuri Karavi have got a brace, and uh, we safely threw it the next round of the FA Cup. We then absolutely smashed Watford 5-0 back in league action. Yuri Karavi with F4, uh, and Roger with one from that left-hand side. Uh, so you're starting to see some, a little bit of a turnaround. And finally was a 2-0 away win against Millwall, Roger and Martin Alfonso with the goals in this one. And this sees the Premier League table looking like this. We currently sit in 7th position on 52 points, 6 points outside of the Champions League playoff spots. Now obviously with the level of points that we've got, 8 games remaining, the max we can get is 76, which wouldn't even be enough to beat Leeds United. So I think it's safe to say that Leeds, Birmingham and Huddersfield are all out of reach for us now, even if it's not mathematically possible. They are out of reach. So we are aiming squarely at Barnsley and Nottingham Forest. So 64 points for Barnsley, 66 points for Nottingham Forest. So either 12 or 14 points in the next eight games. And we will have had a successful season. It, I think the injury crisis derailed it. I honestly think this was our best opportunity in a while to get really high points total. But things happen on FM. Things just change and... We've got to roll with the punches. So that takes us to today where we will face Birmingham City at home in the Premier League and Tottenham Hotspur away from home in the FA Cup quarter final. Now it's going to be an interesting. I'm going to put a lot more on my focus on the FA Cup if we manage to get through against Spurs. Domestic Cup competitions hasn't been our forte during this series. Um, so it will be nice to be able to pick up our first FA Cup win if that's at all possible. So the lineup for today's game is a little bit different than what we're used to seeing. Jensen in goal, Salvi now returns after his three months in injury at right back. Garcia, Nuno and Fabio Andre completing the defence. David Pierre keeps his spot in defensive midfield and Mungana comes in at central midfield. Marlon Gill wasn't playing very well, so I've decided to change our role about to a box-to-box -box midfielder and give Mungana the spot there. He would either be playing at right back or centre on midfield. That's his two positions, and he's the best player we've got in both of them positions. But Salvi's playing better than Marlon Gill was, so Mungana comes in at centre midfield. Karaviev, Pat on Roger, and Martin Alfonso playing up top. Now, I'm still switching about between Karaviev and Martin Alfonso between... Which one plays up front, which one plays right wing, but for, at least for today, Karaviev is on the right hand side. So of course at home against Birmingham, I am expecting a win, or at least we are favourites to win. Uh, hopefully with the bad runner form put behind us with the three straight wins that we've just had, we can keep that going today at home against Birmingham. First highlight of the game comes 10 minutes in, David Pierre playing the ball in, it's cleared by the Birmingham City defence. And it looks like it could be a counter-attack and opportunity for them, it's played up to on Anderson, is that... The lad we used to have. He takes a strike and goes uh, for goal. Jensen saves it quite comfortably. I think that's the lad we had on loan from Manchester United. Was it at Birmingham? I think it was at Birmingham City as well. We'll have to take a look at that. Hold on. It is Andrew Anderson. He was the striker come attack midfielder from England. We had, I was at Huddersfield. We had him on loan at. He signed for Birmingham City this season for 32 million quid. That's a nice little bit of history there. Fabio Andre with a big punt up top is... Very poor, and Birmingham City win the ball back in midfield. They feed it out to Molina on this right-hand side, into Barco. He had a lot of space there. I'm surprised he didn't take the strike on, and his second strike is pretty poor as Roger plays a forward to Martin Alfonso on this left-hand side. He's got nobody in support apart from Karaviev, arriving late at the back post, and Yuri Karaviev gets his 19th goal of the season, and Martin Alfonso with the assist. And that is very nice to see the both of them combining, considering... I never know which one of them to play in which position, but uh, 
There we are then combining him headed to the back post. And despite Burnham City's domination, which we're going to have to address, uh, we find ourselves 1-0 up. Pat on, coming down the right-hand side, feeds it to Yuri Karaviev, who decent crossing to Alfonso as well. Alfonso can't quite put his header on target, though. Another highlight now. Roger heads it down to Alfonso. He gets past one. He goes for goal. The keeper with the dodgiest save in history. That wouldn't have even been a highlight if he just saved that uh, comfortably, but uh, uh, we'll take it. Free kick now. Barco plays it in for Burnham City. It's cleared, but it comes out to Pavlenka, and he uh, hits it just over the bar. As you can see by the match stats, Burnham City probably don't deserve to go in at half-time 1-0 down. But we we don't care what's deserved. We just want the three points. We've gotten a counter-attack and team mentality. See if that can uh, get us into the game a little bit more. And we have a free kick very early on in the second half. Rothwell steps over for Birmingham City. And he buries it. Neil Rothwell, his first goal of the season. Of course it's his first goal of the season. It's always the first goal of the season. Klaus Jensen doesn't cover himself in all this glory here. He should have this side covered if the Wilds cover on that side. And we go 1-1. Come on, boys. We need to get back in the lead here. 60 minutes in. Salvi whips it in. It's cleared. Falls to Roger. To Alfonso. I think he was offside anyway. Only 10 minutes to go. We're going to have to make a change. Fabio Andre can come off for Billy Abraham on that left-hand side. David Pierre can maybe come off for Nacho Gonzalez. Not a move I'm delighted to make. And uh, Alexander can come on for Roger on that left. Free, uh, free kick corner. Marcus Leonardo plays it in. We get it clear. And Yuri Karaviev can bring the ball forward. And we are well on the counter. It's 2-1-2. Two two. He gets past one. He's in behind. He's pass it to Alfonso. And he scores there. We'll stick with this corner. It's Andy Patton is the man who is stepping over to take it. He plays it in. Oh, We get the header on it, but straight at the keeper. Come on, boys. We need, th we need three points. Just from your own sanity, Abraham plays it back to Nuno. Some decent play by us until Abraham completely gives away the ball. Thankfully, Gonzalez is there to win the ball back. And Caravia finds Salvi on this right-hand side. He's getting tracked by his man, but he plays it in. Comes to Alexander at the back post. He's, is he onside? I think he's onside. And Alexander's 12th goal of the season puts us 2-1 up with only a few minutes remaining. We will go back to a balanced team mentality. Try and protect this lead, lads. And get the three points. We don't deserve this. This is the worst we've played in four games. But um, we might be able to get away with it. Final highlight of the game. One minute remaining. Do not throw it away now. Rice feeds in Marcos Leonardo. Down the left-hand side. Comes out to Rothwell. <sighs> Almost gets his second goal of the season. Oh, how is there another highlight that was like 40 seconds left on the clock? Rice finds Marcos Leonardo. He whips it in. Nuno manages to just about get a clear to throw in. This is surely full-time referee. Just, just blow the whistle now. We're 10 seconds over. I've got places to be. He finds Bellin and Molina plays it in. Garcia clears. And it's a free kick. And that is surely all she wrote. There we have it then. Crystal Palace 2. Burnham City 1. We get away with that. I'm not happy with the performance. But um, not the greatest way to lead up to a quarterfinal in their vehicle. But it's three points nonetheless. We close the gap to fourth. Two, three points. But they do have a game in hand. And uh, we move on to the FA Cup quarterfinal. So we're at the Spurs game, quarterfinal of the FA Cup. Only change to the starting eleven is Yuri Karaviev and Martin Alfonso switching positions. You know, they combined nicely uh, last game for the goal, but apart from that, neither of them really pl played particularly well. And it has become a bit of a conundrum this season, them two. Uh, and it's something that in hindsight I should have really, really had sorted during the summer or January transfer window. But anyway, enough of the team selection was the first 25 minutes of this game has gone by without incident. Uh, I think we've been beat twice by Spurs this season, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong about that, but I believe we have. So if we are to get a win today, it'll be the first win we've had against them this season. And we get our first highlight 33 minutes in. Mungana picking up the ball in the centre of midfield and finding Martin Alfonso out on that right-hand side. He's dispossessed, but it falls to Salvi. Can he get the ball in? He plays Alfonso in to Karaviev to Paton. Oh, Paton. I was already celebrating in my mind. I thought that was going in. The highlight continues, though, as Mazamiro plays through Yevtoshenko. Aye, that guy. And he uh, crosses it in the Suleiman for Fana and puts Spurs 1 0 up. That all came from our attack. And I mean, just what, what, what more can you do? Come on, boys, get ourselves straight back into it. Or maybe not, as Rakeem Harper plays in Yevtoshenko. <laughs> 
Alexander. Coming down the left-hand side this time. We'll try our look down here. Pat on Roger and Fabio Andre are the men combined. And he gets past his man. Whips it in. Karaviev should be scoring. Another highlight now. Andy Paton comes deep for the ball. Tries to fade through. Karaviev does eventually get to him. And it's a great block by the defender. That would surely have went into the back of the net. Had it not been for that heroic sliding challenge. Andy Paton to take the corner. It's played in. Karaviev wins the header and it's straight at the keeper. And there we have it. The first half is over. Spurs 1, Crystal Palace 0. Not very happy with that. I mean, we're performing pretty well going by the match stats, obviously. But just the lack of goal scoring opportunities is what's costing us in the end. Rakeem Harper got the ball on the left-hand side for Spurs. It's played in and it's just over the bar. 40 minutes to go in this second half. Has started pretty much in Spurs' favour. Uh, Mazamiru picking up the ball in the centre of the park. Alfonso with a decent challenge there. But it does fall back to a Spurs player, Maquero, coming down this left-hand side. Ball's whipped in, four fans there, and it goes over the bar. We are going to go attacking. Final 35. We've scored. And I wasn't watching. <laughs> Ian Salvi with the assist. Karaviev with his 20th goal of the season. I was too busy uh, making some player uh, instruction changes. And Salvi gets the ball in. Karaviev's there. Easy as you like finish. We're going to stay attacking as well. Uh, we're not going to uh, change that at all. With 15 minutes to go, we will look to make some changes. Alexander can come on for Roger on that left-hand side. Um, Marlon Gill can maybe come on for Ian Salvi. And then we'll put Mungana at right-back and put Marlon Gill in at central midfield. And I'm not sure if this is a highlight or just something that showed up because I was making a substitute. We'll stick with it, though. Santillian Jr. finding Selva Andre Andrade. And he gets it back from him down this right-hand side. Can we get the challenge in? No, we can't. He goes for goal and hits the side netting. Come on, boys. Ten minutes to go in this game. I would love to make it to an FA Cup semi-final. And hopefully a final beyond that. Fabio Andre receives the ball on this left-hand side. Drives into the box. He goes for goal. Poor goalkeeper in that. I thought he was going to uh, spill it into the back of the net. But it does go out for a corner. And it will be Fabio Andre, the man, stepping over to take it. It's whipped in. It's cleared by Spurs. Time is ticking away. Fabio Andre picks up a knock. That is not what I wanted to see. We'll bring on Billy Abraham for him. And we have a highlight. Spurs with the corner. It's played in. We do manage to win the header and get it clear. But they are still on the attack. Do, do not get sent off. Please be offside. He's not offside. Oh. Leonardo Selva Andrade gets Spurs' second goal of the game. With only a minute remaining of regular time. And uh, we're going out there for your cup, boys. That is it. Maybe, just maybe, we'll have an opportunity. Mungana coming down the right-hand side. Gets past one. Gets past two. Oh, Mungana. That would have been such a good goal if you could have buried it. But uh, I think that's going to be the final opportunity of the game. Ten seconds remain. And there is a highlight whether this actually leads to anything or not. Phil Fodden to Santillion Jr. It's a Spurs goal. <laughs> 94th minute. And we complete our collapse. And there we have it, boys. The final hope. Of a successful season in terms of silverware goes missing. Spurs 3, Crystal Palace 1. We're out of the FA Cup. In terms of the next episode, then it will be the final two games of the season against Brentford and Aston Villa. We haven't got an awful lot to play for right now. Um, we know it points-wise we're not going to be able to top our leaderboard. So we are just playing to beat Barnsley, beat Nottingham Forest. 55 points, we only need 11 more to match Barnsley. Uh, we should be able to do that in seven games, hopefully, if we don't collapse too badly. And uh, hopefully we can then get enough points to beat Nottingham Forest as well. But anyway, boys, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.